Good. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the lockdown live stream with a, a very good friend of mine from Nepal, uh, Mr. Danbada Chaudhry. Chaudhry. Um, we're sitting here in Anantara Golden Triangle on a very, it feels like, Chit, it looks like Chitwan National Park. It's very, very foggy, but you will notice the difference between DB and myself is I'm in my usual uniform and DB is wrapped up warm. So it's very, very cold in Chitwan. Um, yeah. Because we're having trouble with connections and everything else, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to fire up the slides and then I will, uh, and then we will let DB say his, say his piece. Um, let me fire up your slideshow for you, DB. Now I've got to go on to play slideshow. Yeah. Okay. So, DB, without further ado, I'm going to turn off my camera if I can, and we will we will go from there. So please do please do talk and tell us all about. Jatiu Vulture Restaurant and the Buffer Zone Conservation in on the edge of Chitwan National Park in Nepal. And just say next slide every time you want me to change. So, uh, John, uh, do, do I have to like uh, slide this slide or you will be controlling from there? I can, con I will control the slides. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Shall I start? Yes, go ahead and start. I think we're ready. Uh, good morning. And namaste, everyone. Uh, my name is Divi. Uh, I'm from Chitwan, Nepal. So I'm going to share uh, with you about uh, my experience, my learnings, and findings of uh, vulture conservation and working with buffer zone um, uh, uh, community forest. So next slide, please. OK. So uh, uh, first, I'd like to um, uh, introduce, like, I'll tell you a little bit about vultures. So uh, vultures belongs to the raptor family or birds of prey. Uh, they only eat dead animals, and they have a very important role uh, cleaning the environment by eating the dead animals. Next one, please. OK. So there are 43 different species of vultures in the world out of, uh, uh, sorry, 40, uh, 23, 23 and then out of 23, 90 species occurred in uh, uh, South Asia and uh, uh, all 90 species occurred here in Nepal. So, and there are like a two different vultures, like a, you know, old world vultures, uh, which occurred in Europe, Asia, and Africa, and there are uh, 16 species. They find their food by eyesight. And new old vultures uh, occurred in North, uh, North and South America, and uh, they are seven species, and they find their food by smell. Next one, please. Okay. I lost the slide somehow, John. Yes. I lost the slide somehow. Oh, oh, oh! It, hold on a second. Um, no, we still have it here. It's the slide. It's a picture of the the vultures of Nepal. So we can still see it live here. No, I lost. Basically, we have a list of the, maybe you can open it on your computer and just run through it. Run through it non-live, so you, you, you're seeing the same thing, but it's uh, the Vultures of Nepal poster and the, the different species we yeah, have. Yeah I, I, yeah, I found it, yeah. Oh, brilliant, okay. Yeah, and then uh, they are uh, white round vultures, uh, slender wheeled, um, uh, Indian vulture, red-headed, Egyptian, Himalayan griffon, Cinerish vulture, bearded vulture, and griffon vultures. And then um, 
and five of them are uh, grave endangered. And then the number here, so white rum vulture, we have about uh, two uh, two thousand in Nepal. Land revealed fifty to seventy five. Uh, Indian vulture, uh, there are few records in vulture restaurant, uh, and its number is not estimated yet. Red-headed vulture, 200 to 400. Egyptian vulture, 300 to 1,000. Himalayan griffon, 10,000. Senior vulture, 60 to 100. Uh, Bearded vulture, uh, 500. And griffon vulture, uh, it is also, number is not <clears throat> uh, included here. So next one, please. So I'm, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about importance of vultures. Vultures are one of the, uh, uh, the birds only eat the uh, dead animals. They do not uh, hunt in their own. Vultures can eat uh, the carcasses with uh, bacteria and they can digest them. Um, presence of vultures is a sign of good environment. Next one, please. And it has got ecological importance. The vultures help cleaning the environment by uh, eating dead animal carcasses. Uh, that's why it's uh, called a nature shipper. Uh, increases the number of, of feral dogs, jackals, and rats in absence of, of uh, increase the numbers of uh, feral dogs, jackals, and rats in absence of vultures. Uh, and then uh, increase the chances of spreading diseases like uh, anthrax, rabies, plague, etc. with uh, a growth of those animal population. Next one, please. And also it has, uh, like a, there is uh, religious and cultural importance of vulture. Next one. The population of vulture in the subcontinent before um, uh, 1990, there was over, um, five lakhs in Nepal and more than 16 crores in uh, India alone. Next one, please. And the number of vultures started like a, a declining from, from 1990, it was noticed. And then uh, it was the main reason was diclofenac Painkiller, it gets used for both human and animal, and it is available in both bullets and while in different sizes. Next one, please. And research, uh, uh, the, the, uh, several research and investigation uh, were going on. And uh, next one, please. And one of the research in uh, next one please uh, research in uh, 2004 first time it, it was uh, it was uh, found uh, the, the diclofenac is the main reason of uh, 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 um, main reason of death of vulture because it affects on their kidney and uh, it makes their kidney failure and they get gout problem and they die within 24 uh, hours. So next one, please. Next one, please. Next one, please. 
नेक्स्ट वन पे so um, because of voltage uh, decline and uh back page back back please yeah so uh, because of voltage uh, uh were declining very rapidly and then we knew and then we created the concept of having uh, a vulture feeding center and then we named vulture restaurant so uh, we collect the old cows and we uh, keep them in the hospice uh, and then we uh, treat them uh, humanly until they die and once they die naturally we place them into the uh, vulture restaurant here yeah. uh, uh, go back please back please vulture restaurant one back uh not forward backward backward john forward 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 okay yeah. hi db i've just managed to unmute myself oh. yeah uh, next one please oh i know i can't now i'm unmuted i can't change the slide all right let me remute myself and see if I can change the slide. I can... Yeah, okay. Sorry, everybody, about this. This is uh, technical errors. Hi, DB. Sorry about that. I was having trouble sharing the slides. I will try and reshare the screen and see if we can start working again. Okay. 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 No problem. Okay. Let's hope that's better. I will move forward one slide. Yeah, yeah, on slide, yeah. Okay, now I have you again. Next one, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no problem, sorry oh, about back, this. Please. Back, please, back. Back one. Yeah, back one. Okay. Yeah, one more. Like just back. I would like. I would like to tell you like more about the system, how it works. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this is how. Um, the, uh, this is how the reason of falter death was uh, proved with several research. Next one, please. So here, like once we came up with uh, an, uh, idea and concept, having Vulture restaurant, and just I'd like to tell you a few things about the Vulture restaurant, actually what it is. So this is the, this is a, <clears throat> this is a restaurant for uh, vultures to provide a, a, <clears throat> a safe food, uh, uh, like a safe diclofenic free, free food to the vultures. It was established as a first community managed uh, vulture restaurant in the world. Next one, please. So, and then why vulture restaurant? Like, uh, actually, once vultures were declining very rapidly, uh, and then uh, once we came up with the idea, just to, uh, like uh, we 
like uh, thought it would be good uh, to feed them uh, safe food and then just to conserve them, like uh, <clears throat> just to conserve the critically endangered vultures from extinction, providing diclofenac free uh, food uh, regularly to sustaining uh, the uh, vultures conservation, improving local livelihood through promoting responsible to uh, wildlife tourism and other activities. So, and we have several uh, like uh, partners working together with us, including government, uh, DNPWC, uh, and different uh, sectors, national parks and uh, local government, BCN, RSPB, NTNC, WWF, TAL, uh, JDHL, and uh, several other local um, NGOs and, and, and NGOs, and then also the Tiger Tops and Tiger Mountain. So we all are working together for uh, sustaining the vulture conservation. Next one, please. So uh, this is cow hospice where we uh, buy all the world cows and then we uh, keep them here and treat them humanely uh, until they die and then so next one, please. Here you'll see the uh, cow hospice and what uh, drinking facilities and then grazing area. Next one, please. So the, the partners again, like uh, the tide strength and then other partners who are working together with us and supporting us technically, financially, and many different ways. Next one, please. And <clears throat> to sustain the vulture and other wildlife conservation, we, we are doing several different activities uh, to improve the local livelihood uh, uh, by sustaining uh, conservation through the livelihood, local livelihood. So such is like a, uh, local people are benefiting from wildlife tourism. There are over 20 hotels, restaurants, and homestays in the area, and over 100 local people are already employed, and they are selling several local products, milk, uh, and then uh, uh, vegetable products, grain, handicraft, and many other items. Next one, please. And also, uh, we do a lot of different activities since we started the uh, Vulture restaurant. Like a year, see, we do all uh, our best um, educating or making people aware uh, about the conservation. And uh, you will see so many uh, different levels of people and all the stakeholders, identify the stakeholders. So we do different types of awareness uh, program with them. To, uh, during the establishment of this uh, project and also to sustain the uh, con uh, conservation project. Next one, please. Here is more awareness program with different level of people, including government stakeholders. Next one, please. So uh, together again with vulture conservation, uh, we uh, plan to improve the local uh, livelihood and without improving local livelihood, we cannot uh, make them uh, working together with uh, uh, us for vulture conservation. So that's why uh, with awareness, we started several other types of uh, livelihood programs. And here you'll see some glimpse of um, um, farming. So we pro provided um, like a seed money, also the, we provided technical support, and then um, uh, we provided many different uh, support for uh, improving their livelihood. Uh, that's, that's the reason now all those local uh, marginal, marginalized local people are uh, working together as a conservation partner, uh, not for only vulture conservation, also the other wildlife 
uh, conservation. Next one, please. So here you'll see some uh, pictures where we had uh, supported for uh, having some businesses. So uh, over 250 indigenous and marginalized families have received fund for the for the business and farming until now. Next one, please. And also we have uh, provided several different types of, types of uh, skill-based training, uh, training. So over 300 locals have received skill-based training, such as nature guide, driving, plumbing, electrical, uh, mechanical, uh, hospitality business, etc. Next one, please. And also, uh, since we, we have planned to make this area uh, 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 unique and uh, sustainable uh, conservation area, so that's why we have planted several uh, different types of um, uh, trees and plants, and we have planted uh, over 500 kapok trees in the uh, buffer zone community forest area and distributed uh, distributed over. Uh, 5,000 native plants uh, in the local area. So uh, we have planned to reduce the, all the exotic plants. Next one, please. So here are some other uh, awareness program. Next one. Also, we have uh, community-based anti-poaching unit um, uh, found by uh, the Thai restaurant. So we have regular program uh, once or twice a month. So every uh, time we go to the different area, we take the youth in different area for uh, monitoring wildlife and also uh, illegal uh, wildlife activities. Ill illegal, like uh, uh, illegally people, those who, are in, uh, those who enter into the buffer zone or community forest area. And then we keep all those records. And same time, we share all um, different uh, knowledge, like uh, tracking animals, identifying uh, wildlife, and so on. Next one, please. And same time, we realize uh, forest fire is, is the uh, forest fire is also the problem. And then uh, we constructed um, a fire line in the buffer zone, and which uh, helps a lot. Uh, so, uh, controlling the fire and also uh, um, um, for the animals, uh, like uh, to move one place to other, and also for the tourists and also for, for the monitoring. Next one, please. And communities are involved many different ways with us for vulture con uh, vultures and other wildlife conservation, and they are. Uh, um, all, all of them are ready for physical work, uh, like um, managing the habitat, and then also uh, awareness program, and then many other different activities. Next one, please. So, a little bit about the um, uh, release program, and Nepal has started uh, release program uh, after having uh, captive vultures in the breeding center. Now, since um, area uh, Nepal Nepal become uh, diaclofenac free uh, area uh, now, all the captive vultures are being released back to the nature. Uh, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about the uh, program diaclofenac ban. Uh, Daclofenac was banned in 2006, and there is uh, meloxicam introduced um, as a substitute. And community managed the Thai restaurant and uh, participatory conservation. And 2000, 2008, vulture conservation and breeding center um, was established in Kostra Chitwan and guideline vulture, vulture conservation action plan 2009 13 and uh, 15 19. Next one, please. 
the main aim uh, of the vulture release program is uh, uh, release captive vulture in the uh, uh, vulture shape zone and uh, validation of uh, provisional vulture shape zone and uh, compare uh, uh, compare behavior and survival between wild and release vultures to <clears throat> assess the uh, assimilation of captive vultures into uh, the wild and uh, evaluate the carcass of the uh, sorry evaluate the success of the vulture shape zone and uh, and also verify the uh, safety of the vulture shape zone 100 kilometer radius surrounding the uh, release site monitor vultures population uh, nsids in uh, pharmacy uh, pharmacies and uh, livestock carcasses in, uh, to inform vulture conservation uh, sensitization activities and thereby ensure the environment is safe for wild and release vultures Next one, please. So here is uh, <clears throat> the number since we released, like we have released four lots, uh, captive vultures, and uh, total we have released uh, 39 uh, captive vultures, and then 40, we have uh, uh, trapped and tagged and released 40 wild vultures. Next one, please. So here you'll see the movement of vultures, like here you'll see the um, purple and green dots. And they are, so each vultures are um, tagged, uh, satellite tagged, and also they have a uh, number tag on their leg. Um, there is ring and also the number tag on the wing as well. Next one, please. So one of the um, <clears throat> uh, very happiest moment for us here in Nepal and for everyone. Uh, so a pair of captive uh, white rump vultures, released captive white, white rump vultures started breeding and last year successfully uh, bred and fledged out the chicks. And again this year, uh, they have started breeding. Next one. And uh, we can uh, uh, monitor them since they have satellite tag. And then this is, this is the area where, um, where like a, a, we are located at Naulpur. And then another area is 100 uh, meter, like a 100 kilometer radius, Dang, and then Kailali. And the, uh, vultures, they can easily fly 100 uh, kilometers for searching food and for other purposes. Next one, please. And vultures, uh, uh, captive vultures are annually checked uh, off, like a, a, uh, just to make sure they are, they are healthy and they don't have problem. So there is a regular check off and also uh, every year before we transfer them to the soft release aviary, we, we make sure they are, they are like a, okay and then their health is good. And then we uh, also the, <clears throat> find out the, um, uh, on the sexes. Next one, please. So here you'll see the um, event. So soft release aviary, once we bring them from the uh, captive breeding center, we release them in the soft release aviary. And then, so we have already, we have uh, released 39 vultures from the soft release aviary in four lots. So each time when we bring them from uh, uh, breeding center, we have them at least six to nine months in the uh, soft release aviary, just to make sure 
they can uh, fly like in the uh, softly aviary uh, and then they can practice and also they can learn all the wild vultures behavior feeding behavior and activities from the soft release aviary they can <clears throat> observe uh, outside all the uh, wild vultures movement next one please So here is some uh, release, um, uh, uh, vulture release uh, program like a GLIM. So where we have uh, like a event and then we release the vultures and then we monitor them. And this is how uh, vultures, they come out uh, together with uh, wild vultures to feed outside the <coughs> soft release area. Next, next one, please. And uh, uh, 40 wild uh, vultures uh, trapped and tagged and released until now. So here you'll see some claims. Next one. And here is uh, together with uh, vulture conservation, and we came up with idea having uh, managing habitat here in the community forest because. Uh, grassland was uh, decreasing day by day uh, because of succession. And then we created largest uh, community managed uh, grassland uh, in Namuna Community Forest. Its area is about 200 hectares. And 60% uh, of the contribution uh, from the community and 40% from uh, WWF Haryoban program. And this is how communities get involved for managing the habitat. Next one, please. And then once uh, we manage the habitat, like uh, here you see the beautiful green grassland, and then one of the very rare species, Bengal floricon, um, arrived. Next one, please. And then number of the um, deers increased in the area. Next one, please. Next one. Next one. Next one. One more, please. Yeah. So here you see the, uh, the number number of the rhino has increased in the area, and uh, where we have recorded uh, 35 rhinos within 400 hectares. And then here you see the little bird. It's called uh, Bristol grass bird. Uh, and it uh, once we manage the grassland, that bird also arrived in the area. And here you see the number of the deer uh, has increased and because of the good habitat and the uh, healthy population of uh, prey species and there is frequent visit of tiger and because of the tiger and other wildlife and then again, so it has become very good area for the um, tourism. And uh, the, the, uh, that area is quite popular for uh, tourists, uh, not only for uh, watching vultures, also the monitoring and observing uh, other wildlife. And also, uh, this is the best way to link with uh, communities' uh, uh, livelihood. And people are uh, very much in, uh, aware and uh, interested now conserving wildlife and also promoting the area as a wildlife tourism area. Next one, please. And uh, grassland management is uh, not only benefiting um, wildlife and for tourism, also be benefiting, people are benefiting directly. Like uh, in early stage, people, they harvest it as a uh, cattle fodder. So uh, over 200 uh, forest uh, user uh, uh, farmers, uh, families benefit from the green grass feeding the cattle as a cattle fodder and also over uh, 300 families benefit from the cat grass. Also people um, sell it and generate the income. So um, it has got very good, um, like a managing system. And then once uh, grass is green, people they harvest it and remaining grass good for animals and birds and then also for tourism. And then when grass gets old, people harvest it. And it is kind of good uh, habitat management and people collect it and they use for thatching and for other purposes as well. Next one, please. 
uh, few more photos, please. Yeah, uh, together with um, together with uh, grassland management and uh, and uh, habitat uh, uh, wetland management is also very very important. And then almost wetland was uh, decreasing day by day. And then we came up with the idea again. We uh, uh, managed like and uh, we started the restoration program. And then we uh, ma uh, managed to clean. Uh, um, the uh, wetland area manually, and the number of the uh, birds and then rhinos uh, has increased, and we have recorded nine rhinos wallowing in the uh, restoration area. Next one, please. So there are a few uh, major outcomes, like uh, um, local uh, people um, become a conservation partner once we started all the awareness program and livelihood program and first vulture conservation program in the world and then diclofenac free district like we um, declare uh, null for null district as a diclofenac free district and first captive white drum vultures released in the uh, wild uh, in the world and then out of nine species, uh, vultures, eight species uh, seen in the area. Uh, new species, long wheel vulture, uh, recorded in 2011. And since then, continuously, um, every day, uh, sorry, every year we record them in the vulture restaurant. Uh, nest number uh, has increased 2005 to 2010, like a 2005, there was 17 nests. And by 2010, number has, had increased up to uh, 67 and also vultures number has increased uh, uh, 2005 uh, 72 to uh, uh, in 2021 uh, 334 uh, uh, birds at a time so also destroyed diclofenac uh, all the uh, polyxate diclofenac from different parts of Nepal. First time uh, we had destroyed uh, scientifically in the vulture restaurant in 2010. Next one, please. And uh, first captive white white drawn vulture released in the world. And then uh, new, sorry, same on, same on. Next one, please. And there are uh, quite few challenges. I have listed some, uh, some here. Transboundary collaboration problem because in India still there are um, uh, some problem of uh, diclofenac is still being used uh, by farmers and then uh, pharmaceutical. And then also is still uh, diclofenac available uh, in the border area of Nepal and also outside. And then also lack of awareness. You still, the, um, so many people are not much aware about vulture conservation. And then uh, poison being used for killing predators. And that's how, how we lost so many vultures a uh, few months ago. And then also lack of funds. Next one, please. So, and then we have future plan to sustain the vulture conservation and then wildlife, uh, other wildlife conservation uh, by making our area as a, a sustainable conservation and ecotourism area. And then we have plan develop the master plan uh, and then provide responsible tourism development training to the uh, interested locals, make wildlife take list of buffer zone and community forest women run resort, bring health, sport, education, agriculture, and uh, uh, tourism together with uh, uh, conservation, build true wildlife machan, doing machan showers, and for height in the community forest, encourage and bring youth in conservation and tourism fields, and make them. Uh, Entrepreneur, 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 uh, and also uh, develop, develop cultural museum, develop learning center, and use uh, buffer zone community forest as an open university. 
uh, improve cow shed and grazing area uh, and build the fence make model biodiversity friendly sports ground uh, encourage uh, locals to plant plant native plants and support support them um, and also make environment friendly color on the uh, house wall of uh, user forest user members so these are the our major plans so uh, to sustain the uh, vultures and other wildlife conservation in the area. So next one, please. And this is my last slide. So vultures uh, roosting on the Kepak tree uh, and then with sunset. Thank you very much. DB, thank you very much. What a fantastic slide. Let me see if I can just find you again so I can see you. <laughs> I can switch my camera on. Thank you very much. Um, I think the one thing that I you didn't show there, to put it all in perspective, is, is I, I last knew that area of land uh, in 2003. Um, it's almost 20 years ago. Uh, I knew that buff. I was I led safaris in there, if you like. And 20 years ago, yes, it was used by some wildlife, but you never saw them. I know tigers and leopards were getting through. Um, it was used by the local community, but in an unmanaged fashion. Um, and so you never saw any wildlife really. And there were no real community benefits. It was individual household benefits. And it was a very, very stressful situation with, with no real natural habitat and no real, um, if you're from a tourist perspective, um, but very much you could see community, but no, no wildlife to see. And in less than 20 years through, through your work, and I know the, the massive team that work with you, the turnaround yeah. is, is amazing um, to see yeah. humans and wildlife living together. Um, obviously, there is still conflict to a certain extent, but be, be, yeah. being able to be used by both. So um, I thought I'd just add that for those who, who didn't know. Um, um, I, I think you, I only had one other question, which was about the uh, the vultures. You had one go as far as look now and, and come, but diclofenac is still a problem across the border in India, is it then? Ah, we appear to have lost DB after that heroic effort of his um, working with with very very uh, um, very unhappy internet. Um, is it still working on Facebook? Okay, uh, so heroic effort by DB not only for the conservation and for the last twenty years and the team there, which I, as somebody who who knew that area of land twenty years ago, I can tell you. It's absolutely fantastic what they've achieved there. Um, and it's a model that I think could be, should be, if people can put the work in, replicated, uh, not only throughout Nepal and South Asia, but we, it's uh, models we can look at for, uh, for conservation and extension of conservation areas and conservation of wildlife um, throughout Asia. Um, as, as, as DB mentioned, there are many, many moving parts and the work involved to get the communities on board and to get everything, uh, everything back to the state, the almost natural state that it is now where you actually have Bengal floricans, which, which are actually more impressive than tigers to, to, to be using that grassland. Uh, tigers, of course, are always impressive and they're what people come to see. But uh, yes, the fact he's got the Bengal floricans there is, uh, is incredible. They're a rare bird. I called them Franklins early, but fantastic work by him. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we uh, we have um, we've lost DB totally, so I'm going to try and answer the questions <laughs> as a, as a non-expert. So Rebecca is asking, what is the nature of the pesticide diclofenac? It's not a pesticide; it's a steroid. It's a painkiller um, used for pain relief, I think. Um, as so as the as the cattle get older, they use it. Um, actually, it's not banned in Thailand. It's, we should have a question. We should be able to ask Dr. Nisa this if she's online because. Um, I, I have to admit, I've seen her still use it, although our, our elephants are very unlikely to be eaten by vultures, unfortunately, because possibly because there are very few vultures in Thailand. Um, so yes, the, the ban on diclofenac um, should be more widespread, as DB was 
about to point out or did point out it's not banned in India yet, hence their, their trouble with the, the vulture population. Thailand uh, does have vulture and um, scavenger, uh, scavenger birds, pop, a, a scavenger bird population, uh, but very, very sparse um, and could do to, uh, could do to, to ban diclofenac as well. There are more in Cambodia and again, diclofenac I think is still legal there as well. So um, yes, it's a, it's a steroidal painkiller. Um, Nisa hopefully is on the comments and will be able to answer that properly. Um, but yeah, not a pesticide. Um, any other questions, Zach? Is it dangerous to, uh, okay, so um, is it dangerous? To, I can't answer that for DB, uh, unfortunately. Um, is it dangerous to work with vultures? I, I, I th the way that they manage to do it, they seem to be, <laughs> you saw the pictures, certainly when I visited last, they were with the wild vultures, they were very much hands off, uh, but it does look as though they're doing some trapping and uh, trapping and adding satellite collars and, and, and tagging. Um, but I guess it's a very, let's put it this way, it's probably a very professional job. And if you, if you know what you're doing, then, then it can be done safely. But um, it's not something I have to admit I would, I would necessarily send to untrained people. Um, yes, and avian flu and everything else, other communicable diseases. Uh, what you saw in the, in the veterinary picture there when they were doing the annual health check that, uh, that, they, that they were all masked, obviously, probably since it was a 2020 slide, probably due to COVID, but also wearing all the protective gear. So um, they, they, they are professionals at what they do. Um, and now, even if they weren't professionals uh, in 2006, when all of this, or five or six, when this started, they now have, have picked it up and have, have attracted global attention, actually. This is, I mean, I'm so proud we got DB on, even if he had to, to battle, the, uh, battle the, uh, the internet and everything else to get to us, uh, because th that, that work has not only the buffer zone work, um, but definitely the vulture work is, is world class and world beating and is being replicated everywhere. So if they weren't professionals in 2005 when DB went into that, then just keen, very, very keen. Uh, bird watchers, uh, they they now are professionals, and as I, as as you will note, they've uh, they've fine tuned it to such an extent that it is a is a well oiled old machine. Um, I think that's all we have from Facebook. Uh, we've lost DB, who of course is the main star. Um, so thank you, DB. Anyway, if you're hopefully managing to watch this on Facebook, uh, I will thank him later personally. Um, and uh, that is it for today. The fog has lifted. It no longer even looks like Chitwan. We can, we can see the grassland and the river down below. We can see the elephants. Um, we will see those of you who follow the lockdown live streams tomorrow, I think, morning at 7.30 and another one in, on Friday afternoon, but it could be the other way around. Watch for, uh, watch for the, the, uh, well, the, the, the schedule is printed. Um, if you are in Thailand, please do come and see us here in the Golden Triangle. Actually, you can now travel to Thailand without quarantine and everything else. So if you, if you feel like coming to Thailand, please do come and join us. Um, I am not sure the status of Nepal, but I do encourage everybody who maybe even before you come to us, come on, if you've been here before, I do encourage everybody to go to see um, Tiger Mountain um, in both, or Tiger Tops down in, in where DB is living in, in, in Chitwan um, and see that buffer zone for yourself. They have a great lodge called Tiger Tops um, and it's a fantastic place to stay. They will look after you beautifully. There are also other community lodges there, but always stay at Tiger Tops if you can. Um, and they will look after you brilliantly. Fantastic naturalists, and if you're if you're lucky, DB himself will show you around because he is a, he is the prime advocate down there for, for what's going on. And you may even see a, almost definitely see a rhino. Um, you may even see a wild elephant. You may see a tiger. Um, so go there, and also while you're while you're there, pop up to see my friend Marcus in Pokhara and Tiger Mountain there as well. So uh, do go to Nepal if you can get in. If you can't get to Nepal, come to Thailand. Um, and uh, yes, I will see you all on the live streams, hopefully in person soon, but on the live streams tomorrow morning at 7.30. Till then, thank you very much for watching and uh, sorry everybody about the connection problems, particularly to DB who, who heroically battled through them. Um, and I hope we got something out of, or you got a lot of information from his talk and, and the, the fantastic work he's been doing over the, he and the whole team have been doing over the past 20 years. Thank you very much and goodbye.